Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. I'm Jad Dizon and I am an IM specialist here at IM Team, a cybersecurity company located in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So in this five-part demo series, we will be addressing the need for role-based access control as well as implementing the solution. So what role-based access control is, is when you give a user a specific role or permission to have access to a specific resource. And these roles would be defined according to their job description, their authority, and the responsibility within the enterprise or organization. So let's look at an example here. Acme Corporation has their own identity access management solution, and they've been using it for years. They have centralized provisioning workflows and policies within the solution. They can quickly onboard new hires and offboard employees that leave the company. And provisioning of accounts is done simply through assigning a role to the employee. However, they have not spent a lot of time in role design. So they pretty much create a new role whenever a new solution would be in place, a new job function, or a new project would be done within the business. So these roles are created with very minimal supervision with the business. As a result, they have hundreds and hundreds of roles with similar names and overlapping purposes. A recent audit revealed that Acme has the following risks. Excessive access given to users and segregation of duty violations. Unfortunately, the situation at Acme exists in real-world organization, and it's often caused by help desk analysts getting confused on which roles to assign to users. Role definitions are created on demand with very little consideration of the overall role design. And IT defines and creates roles, but they do not have proper knowledge for the business. So to solve this problem, we take on enterprise role methodology. We plan, we discover, we define, and lastly, we certify. So in this series, we will discover possible role candidates. In order to do that, we determine the relationship between a permission and a user. So what counts as excessive entitlements? As you can see here, everything under the required would be required roles that the user must have once they enter the organization. If they have other roles besides those required, only then they would be considered excess. So we could go through each user and determine what roles they have and they do not have. However, this can be time consuming and in a larger organization, it grows exponentially. To discover role candidates, we determine the relationship between a user and a permission. And there you go. So if we look closer into the data exploration, with an 88% mineability, what that means is there's an 88% relationship between the permissions and the users. So now that we have discovered that there are possible role candidates within our example, we can move on to the next step, which is defining all of them. So that concludes the first part of this demo series. Thank you, everyone. I'm Jad Dizon, and I'll see you guys on the next one.